Our blue planet is made up of over 71% water. And yet, this watery world holds many secrets we have to uncover. Beneath the surface of our rivers and oceans exists a myriad species. But we know so little about their life histories, their movements and migrations, and the habitats they depend upon. Human activity and changes in our climate are having a notable impact on our marine and freshwater habitats. But how are these changes affecting the creatures that live in, on, or below the surface? In order to protect these habitats and species, we first need to understand them. And in order to do that, we need to dive deep below the surface. Rapid technological advances over the past few decades have seen the emergence of a suite of electronic tracking devices that can remotely monitor species in previously inaccessible environments. Right now, a group of nearly 400 scientists from 33 countries across Europe have joined forces to use this technology and address the most pressing questions related to aquatic ecosystems through a cost-funded action. Their mission is to track aquatic animals across Europe to better understand, protect and manage them. The European Tracking Network, it's a network in all the meanings of the word network. It's a, a physical network of devices that listen to the sound produced by tags. But on the other hand, the European Tracking Network is also a network of people. The scientists that study the behaviour of aquatic animals in Europe, they can come together and collaborate and exchange knowledge. It's a fast evolving field of technology. Over the years, we've gone to smaller tags with more memory, longer battery lives, but also having more sensors available, so able to measure more environmental information. The overall objective of what we do is that we want to better understand fish. Why do they do what they do? And then how these insights can help us to better manage them and to better protect them. We hope to find a balance between ecology and economy. Atlantic bluefin tuna are one of the most highly valued fish species in the world. Previously, catastrophic overfishing led to their populations crashing and their disappearance from waters where they had previously been abundant. Improved management has caused them to return to areas of the North Sea and through tagging programmes, scientists are hoping to understand why they've returned and how to better protect them from unsustainable fishing practices. The Atlantic bluefin tuna is one of the most iconic fish species in the world. It has these massive migrations across and throughout the Atlantic. They used to be a regular visitor in the Scandinavian countries for millennia, but they disappeared in the early 1960s and we essentially haven't seen them until just a few years ago. With the return of the tuna, of course, we would opt to try and understand them, where they go, where they feed, where they spawn. Yeah, that's a necessity in order to make proper fish management. We started the first tagging project in 2017 and has done it uh, every year since. And from what we do in the tagging project uh, on bluefin tuna, we get a whole suite of information back. Based on those data that reported back to us, we can make a route of the fish. We can also look at the more detailed diving behavior and the temperature experience. But we're also looking into a return pattern behavior. We are putting some acoustic tans on the last up to 10 years. We have the potential for repeated observations of the same animal over a very long time period. We should certainly do all we can to understand this tuna better to avoid such a negative scenario as the collapse of the population was. Well-managed fisheries are key to sustaining our aquatic species. And over the years, unregulated fisheries have caused the collapse of many fish populations. And sadly, this is a trend that still continues today. Lumpfish or lump suckers are marine fish found in Arctic, North Atlantic and North Pacific waters. Commercially harvested in many countries for their roe, known as poor man's caviar, 
this harvest is often unregulated. We know how much roe is landed, but we don't necessarily need, know how many individual fish are harvested. And of course, only the females are harvested. So there is a bias in, in the fishery. But of course, because our, our knowledge is so limited in terms of what we know about those fish, it's quite difficult to actually determine whether this fishery is sustainable or not. We don't really know where the fish go and what they do for about 90% of, um, of their life cycle. The way that we're trying to get this habitat information or trying to figure out where the fish go is by tagging them. The data that we're trying to gather is from data storage tags or archival tags. This data will give us information on the temperature and the depth that these fish are using and then we can use that to try and map out the habitats that they use and their needs both during the spawning season but especially outside of the spawning season because that's essentially when we don't know where the fish are. We can only get this information if we get the tag back, so this part is pretty important. Understanding the migratory patterns and spatial use of a species is vital in their conservation. A species protected in one area might not necessarily remain within that space, so understanding its full range and habitat use is critical. The European eel is a species renowned for its epic migration. Spending most of their life in fresh water, these fish undertake an astonishing 5,000 kilometre journey to the Sargasso Sea to spawn. The young eels, known as elvers, undertake the same journey back to freshwater rivers in Europe to live out their juvenile years until they return once again as adults to spawn themselves in the Sargasso. Sadly, this fish is also known for its devastating decline. Since the 1970s, their population has crashed by 98%. So understanding where and when these fish are being most impacted is vital for the future survival of this species. And this time, we're listening in to find out. Deploying acoustic tags on eels allows us to listen in to their migration as they journey downriver and out to sea. By fixing listening stations along the eels' migration route, tagged eels emit an acoustic ping as they swim past, logging their position, date and time. We can uh, not only learn uh, how eels migrate in rivers, during what periods, what moments of the day, but we also can identify if the eel faces issues passing this migration barrier. We are learning new things constantly, and with this ETN network, connecting different local networks, merging them together, gives you a better insight on the actual movement of the fish species that we track. By connecting all these different networks, you start picking your species, your track fish, and different networks and, and that's really cool to now actually start seeing the very big picture. Listening in can be an incredibly effective way of better understanding species. Alongside our European eels, acoustic technology is also being used in the protection of our skates and rays. And through this work we have already identified a key spawning site off the coast of Portugal. Most of the work we're doing, we are relating it with MPAs or marine protected areas and we're trying to figure out the amount of protection that these MPAs actually offer to this particular species. The information we collect is also important towards their conservation and fisheries management. From our recent studies with the rays and skates, we have potentially found a pupping or a mating area outside of the MPA. This is something that wasn't known until now. We've been providing a lot of interesting and relevant information towards conservation and, and fisheries management. This data that we're providing and this, all of this information is very useful towards the sustainable management of our oceans. Our aquatic world is a vast and mysterious place. But through collaboration and the varied technology of the European Tracking Network, we are beginning to build a picture of how some of our most critically endangered species are not just using our rivers and oceans, but where and when they are facing threats from human activity. By continuing to build on our knowledge and understanding, by sharing our findings freely, and by working together with stakeholders, scientists, innovators, and conservationists, we are working towards a future where our rivers and oceans and the life they hold is both better understood and better protected. 
how we use this incredible and growing resource of data by advising policy change and management could help mitigate for some of the negative impacts we have inflicted on our underwater world. In turn, creating a healthier, more abundant aquatic environment in which the species and habitats that call it home can thrive.